Great Lakes Prepping here. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a tasty dandelion mead in about the simplest way possible. Now, if you're not familiar with what mead is, it's an alcoholic beverage that has a lot of similarities with wine, both in how it's made and, I guess, the general type of beverage that it is. The big difference with mead, however, is that it's made with honey. For it to be a mead, it's got to be made with honey. People have been making dandelion mead and wine since forever, and it's what some have described as tasting like if you could put summer in a bottle. Now there's a lot of variations on the recipes with both dandelion wine and mead, but for this video I'm going to go with pretty much the simplest base recipe for my dandelion mead. It's super easy to make, it's about as easy to make as the uh, make wine in five minutes video that I that I did a few months ago uh, but there's one step that uh, requires a little bit of effort and that's picking dandelions you got to start with um, a whole bunch of fresh dandelions now I'm not especially excited about the idea of crawling around bending over a million times picking dandelions from all over my property so my advice is to do what I did and employ some good old child labor and once you got a whole bunch of dandelions and a couple other ingredients, you're ready to start making your mead. So let's get into it. Okay, and now that we've got a whole bunch of dandelions picked, the next thing we have to do is separate the yellow petals from anything that isn't yellow petals. This part's kind of tedious and I just have to go ahead and pluck all these little yellow petals off of here because that's the only part we want for making our mead. And what we wanna end up with is one full cup of just those petals. And now that we've got those, we're gonna move over to the stove here and Get this mead going. So for this recipe, you need about a gallon of water because you're gonna end up with roughly a gallon of mead. And to start, I'm gonna take uh, about half of a gallon of water and I'm using filtered water. Now you can buy filtered water from the store or use your own filtered water that you've made yourself. Either way, uh, get about half a gallon of it into a pot on the stove. And then we're just dumping in all those dandelion petals. And as we turn the heat on, we'll just go ahead and kind of break up these petals in case they're clumped up at all. And I want to let this come up just to a boil. And as soon as it hits boiling, I'm going to turn that heat back off. So we'll give this a few minutes and come back when it's boiling. Okay, we're just about reaching a boil in our pot. So I'm going to turn the heat off. And now I'm gonna let this sit here for 30 minutes. Just go ahead and let those petals steep there in that hot water for half an hour. And then we'll come back and do the next step. All right, it's been 30 minutes and now we're gonna move on. And you can see that uh, most of those petals have kind of settled here in the bottom of the pot and that's okay. We're gonna stir it up again in a second. Uh, but the next thing we need to do is add a couple of more ingredients. And first is the honey. That's what really makes a mead a mead. And for this, we're using some good organic raw honey. And I'm pouring in two cups of that honey. And next, we're going to squeeze in the juice from one entire lemon. And we're gonna stir all of that nice and thoroughly. And after we do so, we're gonna let this sit for another 20 minutes uh, before we move on and transfer all of this into our jug. And again, at this point, the heat is gonna remain off. We're not heating it any more than we did with that original boil. And now's the time where we have to transfer our ingredients so far into our jug. And for this, I'm using a one gallon glass jug that's been completely sanitized. You wanna make sure it's completely clean, uh, otherwise it's going to risk killing your yeast and therefore your mead. Now, depending on how you like to do this, some people strain out all of these petals before moving on to this step, but 
Uh, other people, they keep the petals in there pretty much for the duration of the fermenting. And that's what I'm going to do. And so using a uh, little measuring cup here, I'll just sort of transfer this into the jug through a funnel. I could do this any number of ways. This way is just kind of the easiest for me. I've got kind of a, uh, a wide funnel here that'll uh, hopefully let this all pass through, including all those petals. Okay, now taking some more of that filtered water, we're just going to top this jug off. Well, not quite top it off. We're going to bring it pretty close to the top, leaving uh, at least a good couple inches of headspace. And we'll bring it just uh, not quite to the point of the neck of this bottle. And now we can add our yeast. Now for this, you want to use some kind of wine or champagne yeast. Uh, it's not going to matter a lot which kind you use because this is, you know, sort of a backwoods uh, kind of a hillbilly recipe anyway. But uh, a popular yeast to use for meads is this one right here. And uh, I'll put the link to this exact type of yeast uh, in the video description below. And we just want to use one packet of this. And we're just going to pour it right on in with this little funnel. And we'll put a cap on the jug and just give it a little bit of a swirl. We don't want to agitate this thing a whole lot. Just, just enough to kind of distribute that yeast around a little bit. And uh, the fermentation process has pretty much started. Or rather, it'll start very soon. So the only thing we need to do now before just letting this sit for quite some time is to plug the jug here and put in our airlock. And what the airlock does is allows gases to escape out of the bottle, but doesn't let any contaminants or anything else get in the bottle. We have a little bit of water inside of this thing, and that acts as kind of a, a barrier, so only uh, gases can escape and not get in. Now there's different ways people do this. Uh, instead of buying an airlock, they might put a balloon over the opening, and you can see as the gases start escaping, the balloon expands, and every day or so you gotta make sure to kinda release that balloon so the pressure inside of it can um, sort of go away and the balloon deflates again. But you can't simply just cap your jug because that gas is going to build up. And after uh, a few days, you're basically just going to have a giant sticky honey bomb because that pressure will build up enough uh, to break your jug and to shatter it. So you got to use something like an airlock or the balloon trick or something. And now for the really boring part. I'm going to stick this in a cool, dark place and let it sit for anywhere between three and six weeks. I'll check it every couple of days at least to make sure that, uh, that my air, uh, airlock is still bubbling because uh, bubbling means gases are escaping, which means fermentation is happening. Now, if I don't see any of that bubbling uh, in the next couple of days, then... I could assume that something is wrong. Maybe my yeast is bad or some contaminant killed the yeast. Um, but generally, I'll start seeing that bubble within a, a day or two and it'll continue bubbling for, uh, it depends, a couple weeks, three weeks, maybe longer. I'll probably uh, plan on moving on to the next step after about three weeks and we'll end up transferring this out, filtering all the petals out of it and basically uh, bottling it. We're gonna jump ahead in time in this video uh, to that point. Okay, so it's been almost exactly six weeks since I made the first part of this video. And in that time, our uh, mead has been sitting here fermenting and it's finally stopped bubbling uh, from our little airlock thing here. And that's how I know it's time to move on to the next step. So pretty much all we have to do now is transfer our mead from this gallon jug into a couple bottles. And in doing so, we'll leave behind all of our dandelion petals and any other kind of sediment or solids. There's a couple ways we can do this. I can pour this whole thing out and run it through 
something like a cheesecloth or a strainer bag. But since I have this little gadget called a siphon pump, I'm going to use it to transfer the liquid into the bottles. Basically, I'll put this tube in the jug and it'll draw liquid from the bottom, uh, leaving, hopefully leaving any sediment at the bottom behind and also leaving uh, any of these solid petals and so forth behind. But after that, I still may run the liquid through a, a, a strainer bag or cheesecloth just to make sure that it's completely filtered. All right, I think we're ready to start filling up these bottles. Now, an accessory that I don't have anymore that comes in handy here is something called a racking cane. And it's basically a, sort of a stiff plastic part that attaches to the end of this tube that would go down into the bottle and kind of act as a bottle filling device. I can get a siphon going with my little siphon pump and the racking cane will sort of stop and start the flow of the liquid as I press it down into the bottom of the bottle. But I don't have one of those anymore, so I'm really just going to kind of use the siphon pump as a pump and fill these bottles up kind of a, in a more manual way. But that's okay, it's still going to be super quick. Now I can already see that some of my little dandelion petals are coming through the siphon pump. So I'm definitely gonna need to run this through a, a cheesecloth before I consider it done. We'll get the majority of those petals out by moving the liquid over to the bottles anyway, and then we'll go through the straining step. All right, so I think I'll just use one of my uh, nut straining bags here to filter out my liquid. It should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, there's all sorts of dandelion petals getting into my bottle, so this is gonna be a necessary step. All right, I think we're in pretty good shape now, and you can see there's still a lot of sediment that I kind of left behind in the jug, and of course, all these petals that I'm sure are gonna be really fun to scrub out of the inside of this jug, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So I'm gonna give these bottles a quick rinse, and then we're putting our mead right back into them. So there we have it. One gallon of mead works out to be pretty much exactly four standard sized wine bottles. Now at this point I can let the mead sit in these wine bottles for as long or as short of a time as I want. As with any kind of wine making, if you let it sit in the bottles longer, the taste tends to improve, become a little more refined. The wine can clarify a little bit more and be a little less uh, cloudy in appearance, but me, I don't have a particularly refined palate when it comes to alcoholic beverages, wine or otherwise, so I'm not too concerned about that. I'll just go ahead and stick one or two of these in the fridge for now because I think it's better when it's nice and cold. So I'm gonna chill one or two of these bottles and then uh, give it a proper taste test. If you've never tried dandelion mead or dandelion wine, it has what some might describe as a bit of a grassy taste. I don't really think that I would call it grassy personally. To me, it has more of a citrus taste. It's a bit more light and refreshing than something like an ordinary grape wine. And real quick, something that I didn't really spend any time on in this particular video is talking about alcohol content. Oftentimes when making wine, I'll take specific gravity measurements and that allows me to calculate the alcohol by volume, but I didn't bother doing that this time because I've done it in the past and with my mead, it always comes out right around that 10% alcohol by volume mark. 
If you're interested in seeing the process for how that is calculated, I went into quite a bit of detail in a winemaking video I made last year. And if you're interested, I'll put a link to that video in the description below. As for now, I guess that's about it. This is my video on how to make the most basic, tasty dandelion mead. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff. Thanks for watching and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping. As for how that is calculated, I went into quite a bit of detail in a winemaking video I made last year and if you're interested, I'll put a link to that video in the description below. As for now, I guess that's about it. This is my video on how to make the most basic, tasty dandelion mead. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff. Thanks for watching and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.